we are discussing the design of a CPU. In the last class, uh, we have read the design of uh, arithmetic logic unit, the ALU, and today we will read the design of control unit. Control unit, as its name implies, actually it is the unit of mastering the interfaces of all other units of a CPU. So, first we see that what is the function of control unit. So, control unit translates or decodes instructions and generate appropriate signals to accomplish the desired operations. So, we have read the uh, design of instruction set there uh, the instruction is uh, fetched and then it is decoded. So, the decoding after this uh, th this decoding is done by the C CPU CU the control unit and then it generates appropriate signal for uh, performing that particular operation defined by the instruction. Now, based on the contents of the instruction register the control unit sends the selected data items to the appropriate processing hardware at the right time. To operate or uh, to perform an operation, we need some data. So, what type of instruction it is after decoding the by C, CU, then the data is accessed from that particular hardware and after operation the result is again saved to one specified uh, hardware and all these tasks are supervised by the CPU CU. Now, control unit drives the associated processing hardware by generating a set of signals that are synchronized with a master clock. This is one of the important tasks of control unit that it generates the timing sin signal. Normally, for all digital systems, there is a master clock and all other clocks uh, are generated from this uh, uh, master clock uh, in appropriate timing and control unit does this job. Control unit performs the following two basic operation. Actually, it works in two phases rather. One is called the instruction interpretation phase, another is instruction sequencing. So, first we see the, the, the phase 1 or the instruction interpretation phase. So, control unit reads or fetches an instruction from the memory addressed by the contents of the program counter into the instruction register. As already in the last class we, uh, we have read that the current address is always the content of the program counter. So, the spe address specified by the contents of program counter into the instruction register the control unit first fetches the instruction. Then the in control unit inputs the contents of the instruction register. It recognizes the instruction type, first what type of instruction it is, obtains the necessary operands and routes them to appropriate functional units of the execution unit resistors and ALU are the execution units. So, what it does? This is the important task it uh, does the control unit. First, it recognizes the instruction type. It is necessary because how many data are uh, needed or uh, to perform that particular operation, first the CU understands that. Then from where the data or the operands will be available. 
so it gives the signal or to obtain that particular operand from particular unit after that it now we have to do the we have to perform that operation after getting the operands then the it the appropriate functional uh, functional units say the arithmetic logic unit has to perform some operation or it has to be saved into some resistors some intermediate results or the final results then uh, the cu gives a signal to resistors and alu to perform that particular operation so it is the the first job cu then issues the necessary signals to the execution unit to perform the desired operation so actually these two are um, related that after getting that signals after getting the operands the CU issues the signal or ready signal to perform the operation. Now, functions of sequencing phase. The control unit generates the address of the next instruction to be executed and loads it into the program counter. So, all of we know that programs are normally the sequential programs see it is the instructions are sequentially written. So, during execution that it takes sequentially that one instruction after another. So, when one instruction is executed or the execution is over then the CU the control unit generates the address of the next instruction and then the address the particular address is loaded into the program counter as always the program counter contains the current address of the instruction or addresses of the current instruction to be executed. Now, we see that uh, how this control unit. So, uh, um, how this control units are uh, designed can be um, implemented. We have seen that these are the functions mainly the uh, instruction interpretation uh, phase some functions it has to be uh, um, performed and the uh, instruction sequencing part. Now, what type of hardware will be uh, necessary or to implement this uh, control unit or to perform those operations. Normally, two different methods of designing control units. One is the hardware control another is a microprogrammed control. Normally, the hardware control is a synchronous sequential circuit design uh, approach. The uh, hardware control evolved from the fact that the final circuit is built by physically connected the components such as gates and flip flops. Now, in a microprogram control unit, all control functions are stored in a ROM inside the control unit. Now, this memory is called the is called the control memory. So, this memory is called the this is very important term, this is called the control memory, where the all control functions are stored. This is called the control memory. Normally, RAMs and the uh, uh, PELs, the programmable array logic already we read, are used to implement the control memory. Now, the words in this memory are called the control words and they specify the control functions to be performed by the control unit. Now, the control words are fetched from the control memory and the bits are routed to appropriate functional units to enable various gates. The control unit is giving the all enable signals to other units the arithmetic logic unit or the resistors and 
to start the their operation. Now, these control words are stored in the control memory. So, the control unit is taking that control words from the control memory and then uh, they are routed, these bits are routed to appropriate functional units like resistors, ALUs, etcetera. Now, uh, this instruction uh, is executed in this way, it is co that called the microprogramming and sometimes this microprogramming is called the firmware. As another approach is a hardware approach, actual physical connections are available, whereas the microprogramming we can tell as, as if this is a combination of software and hardware and that is why it is called it, we are calling this is a firmware. Where is the software? Because here the functional uh, um, the functions or the, the words control words are stored in a memory. So, these are nothing but analogous to software and then it is routed by the control unit to the appropriate functional units to perform the operation defined by one instruction. Then these units are actually, these functional units are actually implemented by hardware. Moreover, the signals routed to the units or the data routed, these are all normally by hardware. We will see that thing that actually the clock signals or the the data bus, these are all that um, hardware thing. So, actually that is why the microprogramming is sometimes called the firmware. Now, we see the what are the advantages or disadvantages of hardware and the microprogrammed control, as there are two approaches of control unit design. Now, Microprogramming is more expensive than hardware control because it has to uh, access the memory, that control memory where the all the functions are stored. To execute an instruction, the contents of control memory in microprogram control must be read from the memory, which is a memory access, which reduces the overall speed of CU. So, not only it is uh, expensive, not only it is expensive, but also that it reduces the overall speed of control unit, because always accessing a memory means it will take some time. So, here the uh, speed is reduced. The most important advantage of microprogram is its flexibility, because it is actually what is to be done the functions that are stored in a control memory. So, only changing the um, software or the, the functions in the memory, we can change the instructions. So, the most important advantage is its flexibility. Now, many additions and changes are made by simply changing the microprogram in the control memory. So, the program that is stored in the control memory that we can easily change and that will change the, the overall uh, design procedure or actual the processing. So, this is this flexibility is here. On the other hand, if it is a hardware approach, then actually it is a fixed thing. As hardware already uh, we have defined, the hardware approach is actually physically connecting the gates, already the design is fixed. Now, if we want to change, then actually we have to redesign the entire systems, which will be very expensive as well as time consuming and there is no flexibility at all. 
So, this is the one important uh, advantage of the microprogram control design, whereas the um, some other disadvantages as are already I mentioned is the expensive and moreover it is a very slow, slow process. Now, implementation of resistors transfer of control unit. So, resistor transfer is the fundamental concept in the design of control unit. See how we um, implement it or how we declare that thing because it is a firmware for microprograms. So, how we declare the resistor transfers. So, See, we have two resistors. Assume we have two resistors uh, R1 and R0. So, R0, R1, R0, R1 are two resistors. Now, I want to transfer the content of resistor R0 to R1. So, normally this is the notation is used that R 0 to R 1. So, by this notation it, it means it denotes a resistor transfer, but it does not indicate the number of bits to be transferred. Say whether this resistor is a 8 bit resistor or whether it is a 32 bit resistor that is never specified by this notation or by this notation it is not understood that how many bits are transferring. So, for this purposes we have to declare the two resistors in advance that how many bits or what is the construction of that resistors, how many bits are involved. So, for that we use declare, declare resistors. See here declare resistors R0 16, R1 16. This means R0, R1 are of 16 bit resistors, R0, R1 are 16 bit resistors. Now, by this second notation say R0 14 to R1 1. That means, here only one particular bit is transferred. So, R 1 1 by R 1 1 is assigned to R 0 14. This means, the, the second MSB bit most significant bit MSB bit of R 0 resistor is transferred to the second LSB bit the least significant bit of register of R 1 register of R 1 register. So, not only the whole uh, all the bits of the register value are transferred in this way we can one particular bit can be transferred. Now, this is actually unconditional transfer, this uh, R 0 14 to R 1 1 or simply R 1 simply that uh, whole R 1 bit uh, all the bits of R 0 is transferred to R 0 um, R 1 that also we can do. Now, this is a conditional say E 
R0 to R1, here E is a enable signal. That means, enable signal controls the transfer. So, if or E may be a function of more than one variable. So, E can be generated as E is a enable signal, E is a enable signal. So, that will be on is true when 1 or more conditions are satisfied. So, this is a control conditions are satisfied. Say I have two such conditions say A condition is A and B. If A and B then only E is true. <coughs> so, actually in that case E is actually one say one and get this type of thing. So, this is a this enable signal is true. So, enable signal controls the transfer. <coughs> e may be a function of more than one variable that there can be more than um, one input of the condition. So, now if we denote uh, the, the 16 bit register transfer or the enable input controlling register transfer. Say this is a register uh, R 0, this is my register R 0 and this is register R 1. Now, to denote that this is a 16 bit register, the bus is denoted as 16. So, this is a 16 bit register transfer from R 0 to R 1. Now, an enable input controlling register transfer. So, again this is a register R 0, register R 1, 16 bit and this is my enable signal E and actually here the all the conditions E is the output of the the conditions after checked. That means, whether E is true or E is false that will be after processing the conditions. It will give that this is a this is a control register transfer. Now, uh, if we uh, that um, how, how actually what will be the hardware for each bit transfer, because earlier slide what we have seen that this is the notation that hardware in block diagram level the hardware notation that all the all the 16 bits are these are the 16 bits are transferred. Now, actually when physically it is being transferred how that bit wise it is being transferred. So, each bit transfer. Now, this is a uh, a bit n of register R 0. That means, this is a register R 0 from there one bit is coming here. So, this is this is actually one bit bit by bit transfer. So, this is one bit this is this R 0 is a 16 bit register, this is a 16 bit register. Now, say the register is a, can be implemented by um, uh, our uh, flip flops. So, these are the output of the flip flop that is only 1 bit. So, this 1 bit is coming to the this multiplexer. 
so multiplexer of 1 and 0. So, again this is my enable line. So, in this case if the enable is 1 that means, if it is true it is true then this register bit or 1 bit from the register will be outputted to the max output. This is also 1 bit then it is latched because it is a delatch. So, this is my D input, this is the Q output and it will go to B 10 of register R 1. And the other, other is that 0 input of the multiplexer when it is um, uh, uh, enable is 0 then it will be actually the same value is again latched. So, in this can be uh, the actual bit by bit how uh, the bit transfer is occurred from a n bit register to another n bit register that is this is the hardware for that. Now, the hardware implementation of the enable signal. Say here we are considering an enable signal uh, E like that E say my E controlled the R 0 to R 1 where E is some y dot r 2 1. That means, here it is a here the enable signal is a function of more than one variable. See this is a r 2 is a resistor and the second LSB bit of r 2 if it is 1 that means, if r 2 1 equal to r 2 1 equal to 1 and some y value again that y can be the output of some other circuitry that actually implementing the condition. So, if we draw the hardware diagram say I have some condition to be checked say I have two values a and b if a greater than b then only y is y is 1 means true this is my condition and another is this is a say this is the R 2 resistors the second LSB bit R 2 1 if it is 1 if this value is 1 then these two are ended say so then it will generate a E equal to 1 that means true. So, this is my enable signal generation E is 1. So, uh, um, there are y dot r 2 1 then E equal to 1. So, this is a uh, r 2 is a 16 bit registers. So, this, this is my r 2 this is a 16 bit register and this is 0 bit 1 bit is 15 bit. So, this is my R 2 1 this is my R 2 this is my R 2 1 the second LSB and this is my y ok this is my y y is the output of this thing and say it is coming from some register output where it is the condition is whether r 1 
r 0 is less than r 1 what I just now I have shown a less than b or this type of condition is to be satisfied. Now, this is y then e equal to 1 when r 2 1 is 1 and y equal to 1 then e is 1. So, this is my enable line this is my enable signal. Now, when enable signal is on then only that r 0 is transferred to r 1. So, r 0 to r 1 that way and these are all 16 bit transfer these are 16 bit. and in this way it will occur. So, mainly the the main point is that actually R 1 the R register has another input and this is a actually a enable signal or that this is a control line that whether the register uh, transfer will occur or not that is controlled by this E line that enable line. Now, another very important thing is uh, there in control unit design and that is called the bus architecture. So, what is a bus? Buses are normally used to transfer data in and data out of a digital system. So, say we can uh, tell that this is actually the, the there are two units say I have I have two units inside the CPU say unit 1 that can be my control unit here and say this is my ALU the arithmetic logic unit that is my unit 2 say ALU or it can be any other say this can be one input drive input device and this can be my the whole CPU I can write or um, the say the CU. Now, here the control unit say is accessing something from here ok. This can be of this type normally this is a so, this is a say a, a 16 bit, 16 bit line here it is also a 16 bit. Then we are calling this is a 16 bit bus. Similarly, here also this can be a it can be a 16 bit interface line. So, this is a bus. So, buses are normally used to transfer data in and data out of a digital system. Now, two type of buses in bus and out bus transfers data from the external devices into processing section and vice versa. The uh, um, external devices are normally the input device and the output device and the internal devices are the our different units the arithmetic logic unit the control unit or the whole CPU we can think. And then the in bus and out bus are normally the in bus is called the transfers data from the external devices into the processing section and the and by vice versa. So, buses are represented using register transfer notations and declaration statements. So, again how we represent the bus. So, this is bus notations. Say I have just now mentioned we have two type of bus in bus and out bus. So, declare again here it is just like the register transfer declare in bus 16 out bus 16. It indicates that the digital system has two 16 bit wide data buses. Now, in bus to R 0 means data on the in bus is transferred into the register R 0 
in the next block. Uh, see this is a uh, transfer, this notation is normally is a this is a transfer. Here it is a equal. So, R 1 15 colon 8 is assigned to out bus means the high order 8 bits because 8 to 15 means the higher or the 8 MSBs. So, higher high order 8 bits of the 16 bit register R 1 are made available on the out bus for 1 clock period. See here it is a transfer this notation that by this arrow sign we are meaning that the data available in the in bus that is being transferred to the register R 0. Here it is a assignment equal that means the high order 8 bits that are available as a as the out bus for 1 clock period. So, that these are the different notations normally used for bus. Now, the what will be the register transfer description when we use the bus or the registers together. We take one example. So, this is a 8 by 8 unsigned multiplication. Now, we declare registers R 8, M 8, Q 8 that means, we have 3 re 8 bit resistors. So, we have 3, 3 8 bit resistors. Declare buses in bus 8, out bus 8. This we have 2 8 bit buses, 2 8 bit buses. Now, start see 0 to R in bus to M means that uh, the operations uh, can be performed these two operations can be performed simultaneously. That means, it is a reset the resistor R is set to 0 this is a reset resistor and in bus that means, data available to in bus is transferred to the register M and these two are parallelly performed. Now, in bus to Q means the data available to in bus that is also transferred uh, to the register Q. As a general rule, a comma inserted between operation can be exec executed concurrently. That means, this is this comma means this is a concurrent execution or parallel execution. That means, these two uh, transfer are being performed parallelly. This is a concurrent execution. and um, a semicolon between two transfer normally they are uh, performed uh, serially. So, semicolon this, this and this semicolon mean this semicolon means it is a serial execution. After this thing has been performed then only this transfer will occur that is the data on in, in bus uh, will be transferred to the register Q. Now, this restriction is primarily due to the data path provided in the hardware. Now, as there is only one input bus, so the operation in bus to M and in bus to Q cannot be performed simultaneously because there are only one 8 bit in bus. So, after this data this data is transferred to M, then in the next clock cycle the, the in bus is transferred to the register Q. 
So, these two operations are carried out serially. However, one of these operations may be overlapped with the operation uh, 0 to 1, because this is a separate resistor is involved that the resistor R is um, reset to 0 or the content of the re resistor value should be 0. So, that we can this transfer can be performed concurrently to any one of this uh, transfer in bus to M or in bus to Q, because it will not affect the other one. But here as inverse is common, so we can um, concurrently we cannot do this transfer in bus to M or in bus to Q, these are this must be performed serially. And these operations are called the micro operations, all these transfers these are called the these are called the micro operations. Because they can be completed in one clock cycle. So, these micro operations, micro operations So, first thing is 0 to R or say M to in bus, these are called the micro operations and they are performed in one clock cycles. Now, in general we can tell that a computer instruction can be expressed instruction can be expressed as a sequence of mi micro instructions. So, this is one very important concepts that a computer a instruction it can be expressed as a sequence of micro instructions and micro instructions are nothing but the that this type of register transfer or the bus transfer. Now, uh, another uh, um, continuation of the program is that now uh, register the two registers are uh, added. So, actually these are this is a clear register and um, in bus to M means say the multiplicand, multiplicand goes to the register M, the multiplicand, multiplicand transferred and then transfer the multiplier in the next clock, clock cycle another operand goes to Q. Now, uh, in bus to Q, now uh, R plus M to R. So, add multiplicand, this is the add, add multiplicand and the result is kept to the register R, because initially it was 0. So, as if that is that contains the result. Now, multiplier is decremented by 1, because multiplication is nothing but that how many times we will add. So, we are actually doing q into m, q into m. So,
So, this is a q times m will be added. So, what we are doing initially that one addition after one addition q should be decremented the multiplier then it is decremented and we have to continue this up to q times because this is q into m is nothing but q times q times addition m should be added q times m plus m plus m plus up to q times that is m q. So, mainly the normal concept of uh, our multiplication it has been that if q not equal to 0 then go to loop and that means q times m should be added and the result will be kept in r and then r to outbus that means the, the result is transferred to the outbus and halt and go to halt. So, this is the, the uh, micro sequence of micro instructions for the program of a 8 by 8 unsigned multiplication. Now, we see that um, bus structure again we are, we are taking one example to explain the different type of bus structure available that we can that is normally uh, implemented. So, um, one simple uh, addition say the two resistor contents R 1 and R 2 is added and the result is transferred to R 0 that means R 1 plus R 2 R 0 R 1 plus R 2 is transferred to R 0. Now, if we uh, um, see that just to perform this addition using three resistors, the st what will be the step by step procedure. So, in the first clock cycle, so in the first time step we can tell the contents of R 1 are moved to buffer resistor B 1 of the L e. So, um, I have uh, I have to add R 1 and R 2. So, what we are doing first R 1 is transferred to B 1. So, B 1 is my buffer resistor of A L u because the addition must be performed by A L u. So, we have to transfer all this thing to A L u. So, first this is transferred. In the second clock cycle, in the second clock cycle, so it will it must be separated by semicolon because it is serial. So, B 2 contains the R 2. As it is a single bus, as it is a single bus structure, that is why we need two clock cycle to load the operand to the in the buffers of the ALU. So, that is why this is R 1 to B 1, R 2 to B 2 separated by a semicolon. So, contents of R 2 are moved to buffer register B 2 of ALU. And in the third clock cycle, the addition is performed. The sum generated by ALU is loaded into R 0. That means, again that R 1 plus R 2, now already ALU has done this addition and that sum is transferred to the register R 0. So, we have taken only the registers, no bus involved, only the buses are for the transferring the operands and the uh, results. So, if we use a single bus architecture, we need at least 3 clock cycle because we have to do the serially. Serially, we have to transfer the operands and the results. So, this is the hardware for the single bus architecture. Say, I have uh, 
um, a program counter, address register, stack pointer. Okay. See, this is my ALU. This is my ALU. And here, actually, this is uh, the um, uh, the general purpose registers. Uh, I have denoted only three. Actually, it can be many more. So, R zero, R one, R two are my uh, register pool. And these are the buffer registers. Again, buffer register can be many. Here, only two we have shown. So, first that. R 1 should come to buffer 1, if this is my B 1, then in the first clock cycle R 1 will come here. So, this is a R 1 to B 1. Similarly, in the next clock cycle R 2 will come the value of R 2. So, this is a R 2 to B 2 and then that two values will be added. So, actually this is B 1 plus B 2 that same thing as R 1 plus R 2 and then it will go to R 0. So, actually this value will go to this will be R 0 to R 1 plus R 2. So, this is a single bus, same bus, this is a single bus, whether it is a this time it is a taking the uh, operand from the register to the buffer register of ALU and after the addition the uh, result is transferred to the uh, another register R 0. So, by the same bus it is doing that thing. Now, if we do the same thing that same addition by using a uh, two bus architecture. Now, instead of one bus say as if in the architecture there are two buses available. Now, we see that uh, what will be the advantage or disadvantage. See the as there are two buses, so the contents of R 1 and R 2 are moved to the inputs of ALU. Mm, uh, concurrently as there are two buses available. So, one bus will one bus will take uh, the um, R 1 uh, um, buffer B 1 R 1 to B 1, another bus will take uh, R 2 to B 2. So, this will be in the same clock cycle concurrently I can do this thing concurrently and the ALU then generates the sum in the output register. In the second clock cycle, because the two buses are busy for transferring this uh, content of R 1, R 2 to B 1, B 2. So, in the second clock cycle, the sum from the output register is routed to R 0. So, we need here two clock cycle. So, what will be the advantage? The advantage is that for the single bus architecture, we need three clock cycles to do this addition represented by these uh, micro instructions or that execution of this micro instruction. Whereas, for two bus uh, architecture, we need only two clock cycles, but parallelly as it is a two bus so, obviously, it needs the uh, more hardware. So, it is a hardware is more, but it is a fast thing. Now, the performance of two bus architecture can be improved by adding a th um, uh, three bus architecture. So, we see that if it is a three bus architecture, so this is the architecture of a two bus. The same thing there is a register pool again. 
uh, the special register group program counter address register and the, this is a memory buffer register again this is a pool and actually these are the two buses used these are the two 8 bit buses okay, these are the two 8 bit buses used so now it can be further improved by three bus architecture so if it is a three buses are available so what will be do doing three buses so one will uh, do that transfer r1 to r0 so r1 to b1 second will do r2 to b2 and third will do the result r1 plus r2 to r0 so in the same clock cycle the contents of r1 and r2 are moved to the inputs of alu via bus a and bus b respectively the sum generated by the alu is then transferred to r0 via bus c so as now three buses available so in the only in one single clock the whole operations will be the addition operation will be performed. But this uh, three bus architecture obviously the system cost uh, will increase and the complexity of the control unit design will uh, also increase, but it will be very fast because only one clock cycle is needed. Now another important feature. So, this is the three bus architecture of the, um, the th three buses are three buses are available. Now, another another important architecture uh, um, or another important function of uh, the uh, control unit is the uh, is it um, uh, timing signals. See that uh, um, control unit actually one of the main task of control unit is properly sequence a set of operations such as a sequence of n consecutive clock signals. Now to carry out operations the timing signals are generated from a master clock and that has been shown in this uh, picture. So, this is my actual clock and some four timing signals say T0, T1, T2, T3 are generated. So, this is one type of uh, signals that one clock this is the on period and the whole that actually the uh, three on periods of is off period. Similarly, T1 is a different one, T2 is another type and T3 is different type. So, from this master clock from this master clock it will be generated and this is the task of control unit. This is another task of control unit. So, we have read the functions of uh, CU and um, the design of CU here.